All right, so as you can see, we are going to be building a tiny house. We're gonna be working on area, perimeter, and geometry. These are all things that are hiding inside your house and will be hiding inside your tiny house. So follow along with me as I take you through our nine to 10 day project. So building a tiny house. If you've been watching TV or reading magazines, chances are you have seen a tiny house. These little homes are popping up everywhere. People love them. They cost less than regular homes and they can be moved around. There's even TV shows where buyers pick a tiny home that will fit their needs the best. Your city council has been paying attention to the amazing things happening in your classroom. They want to use those skills to build and design a set of tiny houses. You are being asked to create a tiny house that will show off at the Tri-City Realtor Convention. If these houses are a hit, they might choose to build them in town. This means you'll be responsible for designing and building the perfect tiny house. It will include the layout, picking furniture, and using real world math skills to finish this project. Are you ready to build? Let's go see your to-do list. So we have broken this down into nine, nine day plan. Of course, we will see how this goes along the way possibly take 10 days more or if you're fast you'll have some early finishers to do so take a look with me it says on day one we'll just go through the list it's the introduction to the project so this video and begin working on your rough draft day two continue working on that rough draft draft of the house layout day three begin working on your final draft pencil only day four begin coloring the interior parts of your final draft Day five, begin coloring the exterior parts of your final draft. Day six, area and perimeter of your spec home slides. Day seven, construct or build your home. Notice we're not building it until day seven. Day eight, finish the construction. Day nine is your reflection and finish up anything you need to do. And then we have our early finishers of building 3D furniture and creating house problems. We have the to-do list here. It's basically what we turned our nine-day plan into. So as you can go through, you see the first, second, third, all the way to the ninth step. And then the 10th step was uh, the house problems. So notice that nine and 10 were optional. That's why those are early finishers. So the tiny house parts, there are four major parts of the house that you will build and design. If you take a look with me, we've got the base. This is where you create the floor plan of the house. This is the central part of creating the house. It's kind of like it's your floor. Then you have the wall, piece one. Each wall section contains two walls. They're, they are folded in to create house corners. Wall, piece two, they can be cut out to create a rectangle that fits exactly around the base of the house. So you see here, this is actually two walls where my mouse is, and this is two walls here, and this dark bold line creates the corner. So we've got two corners here, and then this, then these will uh, go up against the other to create our four corners. And then finally, we have the roof. That's the final part of your house. You'll be designing the ceiling. So think about ceiling fans, lights in your ceilings, vents. Each of the major parts will be on separate pieces of paper. They can be cut out and placed together to form a tiny house in the shape of a rectangular prism. Now, in the slides, you do have these uh, sheets that if you are virtual, if you are at home, that you can print out, or you can just use your own construction paper to build and use as the uh, and use this as the idea of creating your tiny home. Let's get going on the things to know. So we have a requirements list. We're gonna talk about area and perimeter, and we're gonna talk about the geometry design. Let's first talk about the requirements. Your house will have a list of items that must be included. This will be a list of items for the floor plan and the walls. You will decide where to put everything. Area and perimeter, as you create the layout of the house, you will need to find the area and perimeter of items from the requirement list. Units will be the measurement used for the perimeter and area. Example, perimeter is 24 units. Area is 26 square units or units squared. Then when we move over to the geometry design, we're gonna use our 
geometry skills to find the best solution to fitting all items into the house. All houses are filled with geometry in real life. So use those ideas to help you make the best choices. Math is literally everywhere. Be prepared. Your house must make sense and fit together. You will want to make sure the layout makes sense. Moving on to our tiny house parts, this is more important things that you need to know. After you have created the layout, you will have to find the area and perimeter of items in the house. Not all items will be exactly perfect, so estimate as close as you can. So here is an example of a base, whoops, base floor plan. You'll design the base using a bird's eye view. Imagine looking straight down as you add in the furniture and lay it all out. So taking a look through here, you can add your own walls too. They don't have those, but we can add those by drawing them in. So you'll see that you need, uh, the, in here we've got our bed to the left. We have a house plant. We have the couch. And if you take a look at the couch, they have, for this specific one, you can see how they figured out the area and perimeter. They see that the area of the couch is eight square units because it's two up and four long. Perimeter is 12 because you count around the couch. Table, you can see they've created nine square units. Perimeter was 12. We've got the bathtub, the toilet, the sink. You would end up doing that for all of your required pieces. And you can see in this that they have the layout here. They've got a bedroom to the left. They've got the living room. They have a dining area. They have their kitchen with a counter, sink, stove. They got their bathroom with their uh, sink over here. The only thing I, I see missing is, you know, possibly a refrigerator from this. Now, that doesn't mean that they're completed, completely finished with this. So when you're working on your rough draft, uh, on the following page, you're going to create a rough draft of the house. This rough draft will be used as a blueprint or a plan and will include all of the items from the requirement list. The requirement list will be included on the page or, yeah, around the outside of the page. Sorry. So check off each item once you have included it. So again, this right here is what the rough draft is going to look like. So it's a little bit different than your final. We see that this square right here that I've got, that square is the base. Here we go. And then this outside here, these are the walls. So you have to imagine that this is going to fold up. Each outside rectangle is going to fold up to create the four walls of your house. So you can see here, it says to create your rough draft of the tiny house, check off the items after you add them to your house. So you need a shower or a tub. You need a bathroom sink, a toilet, a bed, a table, a chair, a stove slash oven. You need a kitchen sink, a TV or computer, refrigerator, front door. You need a closet, a desk or a side table, a couch slash sofa or a recliner, somewhere to sit and relax, a counter, a microwave. You need two windows. You need a piece of artwork or a picture, and then you need a mirror. So again, this page right here, this slide, if you are virtual, this is what you can print off at home if you have that, or you can just use paper and draw your rough draft for what you would create out of your own paper, construction paper. If you are in need of any of these and you wish to have them picked up if you are virtual, um, obviously your family can contact one of your teachers and see about picking this up from the front office but it's not needed. You can create this from your own paper. Here is the final version requirement list. It's everything that we just read through, but it's just a final checklist. On the Google slides, you'll see that these check marks can be moved once you've completed them to, uh, to check them off as you go through. So again, everything I just read through around that rough draft is on this one. Then you move on to your final pages. Again, just like the, blue, the rough draft or the blueprint, this paper, this one, and this one can all be printed off at home or use your own paper if you do not have access to a printer. So this one is the base. If you take a look, the solid, this, well, they're all solid, this bold solid line outline of a rectangle, that's your house. Everything around here, so from this point 
from this point, right? Oh my gosh, I'm on the wrong one. From this point, all this is like your yard or where your porch would be. We'll see more about that as I move on. These are the two walls and you have to pay attention to which walls on what side. And you'll see that as we go through. And then this is your ceiling and roof. And again, it says the dark outline is inside your house. There is a single row that will hang over the side. You could add light lighting or other home decorations to it. So for the spec home, if we remember, it said that one of these, you're going to be doing the spec home area and perimeter. You're going to, once you've created your final draft, you're going to look at your shower and tub, your bathroom sink, toilet, bed, table, chair, closet, desk, couch, counter, microwave, and you're going to figure out using that graph paper or your ruler, whatever it is at home you're using, you're going to figure out what's the perimeter, what's the outside edge, what's the area, and then what kind of geometric shape does it have? We've, we've talked about that recently in your um, everyday math lessons. What type of shape? Is it, is it a quadrilateral? Is it uh, what type of quadrilateral? Is it a triangle? What kind of triangle? And you've got all these as well. And then this third one, you know, so you even have the yard and you have the perimeter of the house base, wall one, wall two, if you, however many walls you have, uh, the four walls, outside walls, sorry, and your roof. So moving on to your exterior design, you, you, once you get to this point, you will have designed your house and the inside should be looking great, but you need to decorate the outside as well. So you want to make it look like a real house. Here are some things that even when you're doing the interior, you need to keep in mind. Be careful with your coloring. Only use crayons or colored pencils. The markers could bleed through and they would ruin everything on the inside and outside. Everything would blend together and you just, you wouldn't be able to, um, to tell it apart very well. Look at some pictures of houses and see what the outsides look like to get a realistic idea. Thinking about your windows and doors, if you're up to the challenge, again, this is optional, you can try cutting out where you would have windows. You want to be patient and you want to work slowly. Doors are easier, but windows can take a little bit of time. Your outdoor, si outdoor siding, decide what kind of exterior you want for your house. Like, do you want wood, stucco, log cabin, something else, brick, rock, color it, or add designs be creative. Then when it's time for your student reflection, this is what it looks like. Over to the left, you can see there are some different I can statements. You're going to either decide yes, or you're going to decide, you know what? I need some work, more work on this. So it's completing steps one through eight, finding the area, finding the perimeter. I can find area and perimeter of an object that you create on your own. You can connect area and perimeter and geometry to a real world situations. You can use problem solving techniques to complete this activity. And you can also use collaboration techniques to complete this activity. And then over to the right, you got four things to fill in. It says the most challenging part of this project was, my favorite part of this project was, one thing that really surprised me and something I learned from a classmate or maybe just from yourself. What is something that maybe you learned along the way? So that's everything that you have to do required. Now we're going to look at ex some example slides that show us completed work. Here's an example like we've seen already of a base and floor plan. And remember, pause these as you go through and you can rewatch this video as many times as you need to see these different parts. You've also got them in your slides. Here we've got all of the different parts cut out. So all four major parts once they're fully finished, then you cut them out. You do not want to cut them out until you are fully finished coloring them. It, it just will be so much easier on yourself. And you'll find that if you don't follow these rules, if you don't follow these directions exactly, it'll become quite challenging for you. So I want you to notice the walls. Now, when they print it out, they've got a, a, a square on the left and a square on the right. You need both um, on the left for this to work out, I believe the correct way. We'll, we'll look at it as we, because this one is going to fold going this way. And then this one's going to fold to connect to that. So they both, you want them both on the same side. 
and you'll see it again as we move on through there. So take a look at the left. There's the roof. You can see a ceiling fan. You can see lights that are in the ceiling. You even see some vents. Then we got the wall. We see some, the, this person decided not to cut their windows out and that's okay, but they did cut their door out. So you see it just cut across and down. You don't have to do, all you have to do is two different cuts to make that door move. We see our windows. We see our cabinets. So the next thing I want you to pay attention to is here's the base. So if I'm looking at the kitchen right here on the wall, I see the stove and oven and we see that it goes up three. It's the height is three units. We see over here that it's two units out. So we can see that how that 3d would actually look. This part right here is going to line up. And as we move through, you'll see how it lines up exactly. And you should be able to also see that when we're looking at the bed eventually. Looks like it might work out. Yeah, right here's the bed. And this is how long the bed is. You can see that it would go right here. So here they have them uh, laying on each side. They don't have them sitting up straight yet, but you can see how these cabinets connect to how wide that cabinet is and that's how tall they are. You can see where the door would open up to. See the bathroom, because there's the toilet upright and there's the toilet as we're looking down on it. Uh, here's the sink as we're looking down on it. Here's the sink as it's on the wall. And here is one wall sitting up straight. So another, a better view of seeing it. So you can see that the wall folded on the bold line goes to the corner. You can see all this represents the bed. You can see all this represents the oven and stove. This represents the cabinet. It shows how far out they go. And this shows how tall it is. You see, this is actually a shower. And then here is the other wall. We took that wall down and we put the other two walls up. Again, just another view. And then here, and this is just another view of that. Here we have both walls up or all four walls. And this is the overhead view of them all put together. So the bird's eye view. But again, you can see here's the cabinets in the bathroom. Here's the mirror. There's the sink. Here's the shower because the shower goes on both walls because it's in that corner. These cabinets go on both walls because it's in the corner. And there's the bed. TV, TV stand comes out one. Here is a roof ceiling added on top. So obviously we took one of the walls down, but you can see in once, once you put the ceiling on and you can even see this where that goes up right there. We've got our lights on the, on the roof on the ceiling, ceiling fan here. Here's the outside of it. So remember designing the outside of the house brings the entire project together. Crayons and colored pencils again are the best choices. You might be noticing these little pieces right here. We'll get to that. So this person put lighting on the outside. They put an address. They put shutters. This one did cut the windows out. They've got flowers. They've got a mail. There's the back of it. Here is looking through the window, what it would look like. And these, this person made 3D furniture. You can take a peek through. So again, the early finishers activities were to create 3D furniture for your tiny house and or create area and perimeter word problems. So let's look at the furniture right now. If you've made it to this part and you're on the early finishers, it's time to build your furniture by creating three dimensional shapes. Use two provided graphing sheets with furniture included or create your own. So if, again, if you're virtual, you'll probably be creating your own. I am, I think I did include these uh, slides in case you would like to print it though. So first, Make sure your furniture side matches what you create in your house. Second, 3D, meaning three-dimensional, means you'll have to design on all the sides. Minecraft and Legos are good examples for this. Third, don't cut out the net until you are sure you have enough. Map out what you need. Fourth, tape your shapes together. You can try glue, but it might not work as well. And that's the same thing with your tiny house. 
tape might be best to hold your papers together once you have uh, fully constructed it. Remember, we won't be taping our roof down, but the four walls, tape will probably be your best bet. And fifth, don't get discouraged. This is a very difficult element of design. It will take you a while to master this, but you can do it. If you create walls, you can add those too by using pieces of paper. And again, this is this is a problem solving project. So you have to be up to the challenge. If you want to add those walls, you got to figure out how you want to do it. So for this couch, we would cut out on that dotted line and tape all four sides together. Again, don't tape or glue anything to your house unless I say so. And I, we're not going to do that until the very, very end. Because what if we mess up? So I did include these. So we see we've got couch, TV with a stand, sink, toilet, another TV, chair, bathtub. Um, I believe that's a drain. I believe. I'm not sure. You could use that for everyone. It could be a light. I don't know. Up to you. Here's some other three-dimensional shapes. So you notice we had a bed here, and there's a little bit bigger bed here. Some aerial rugs, table, another table, possibly a mirror, cabinet. Here are some finished 3D objects. Um, to the left, you see a, somebody made a planter. We've got the stove slash oven. We've got a counter, a TV on the TV stand. We've got a table. We got the dog house. So make sure your furniture, make sure you do furnish your house. Whoops. Uh, with 3D objects if you make it to there. Again, that's not a required part. You don't have to do that. This is just the early finisher. There are cutouts, like we said, included, but you can create your own. Be creative. Like that dog house, that's created on their own. It takes practice and it takes patience, but your ideas are unlimited. You can make a mailbox, bunk beds, flagpole, chimney, air conditioning. A fence, walls, stool, washer and dryer, holiday lights hanging off the house. So many different ideas. They are, they're endless. They, the ideas can just keep coming and coming. Be creative. This is where we've worked all year to learn these skills. And now you can use your creativity. And the last early finisher is the housing problems. Here you can create area or pro perimeter word problems based on the items in your house. Then give your problems to another student or a family member to try to solve them. And so we've got four spots there for you. That is our tiny house project. It'll take you a while. Like we said, we've got rough, you know, rough plan here of, of nine days. It may take you longer. Or you may go fast and you get to do the early finishers. Good luck.